I'm sorry. I look down in apology. This is the fifth time I've turned down a marriage proposal from this man. Even though I don't think there will be a sixth, I still can't bring myself to nod yes. I really like him, Jason Hughes. He's someone I'd like to be with for life. But there's just something about the word marriage that makes me tense up. My name is Ashley Sanchez, and I'm a 28-year-old businesswoman. I lost my parents when I was in high school and was raised by my paternal grandparents along with my brother. That seems to have caused my mistrust, or rather, my resistance to marriage. My grandfather Walter is a typical housekeeper. There's a saying Watts vertical can't be horizontal, and he lived by it. Even things within arm's reach, he would have my grandmother, Helen, get them. All he would say was hey. And with that one word, Helen would understand what he wanted. Why does she serve him like a servant, to this extent? Of course, Walter never lifted a finger to help around the house. Even after retiring and staying at home, he did nothing. Moreover, while he goes golfing or on trips with friends, I've never seen him travel with Helen. Well, Helen is more of a homebody, not really interested in travel, that's true. But still, isn't he too much of a stereotypical head of the household? There's no violence, but it feels almost like workplace bullying. My mother once said they married for love, but can it turn out like this even then? I've become very cautious about marriage. Of course, Jason right in front of me isn't self-righteous. But who knows, after marriage, he might turn into the type who doesn't feed the fish once it's caught. That's how much I mistrust married life. The scenes I witnessed in my adolescence have deeply embedded themselves in my heart. There's just one upside. My brother Tyler decided to take his grandfather as an anti-role model. Seeing Walter do nothing around the house, he started helping Helen whenever he could. And as I ponder all this, a sigh shakes my eardrum. This is bad, really bad. After turning down the proposal, I got lost in thought and ignored Jason. That's incredibly rude. I'm sorry, really sorry but I just can't make up my mind yet. Jason sighed again, then gave a wry smile and said, I'll still wait, I can wait for you. Hearing that just makes me think even more. I'm such a terrible person. I feel like punching myself. About a week later, in the evening, I got a call from Tyler, who's living with our grandparents while attending college. It was unusual, so I answered, and shockingly, he told me that Helen had broken her bone and was hospitalized. I asked if she had fallen, but he said no. It wasn't from doing anything. It just broke out of the blue. At the hospital, they did tests and doctors said it was a pathological fracture. Cancer had spread to her femur, making the bone brittle and causing it to break. I was speechless. I couldn't believe that about Helen. I managed to squeeze out a voice. So, what now? It's curable, right? Both the fracture and the cancer. Tyler said weakly. The cancer is already in its final stages. Even surgery would only prolong her life a little. I said I'd come home next weekend and hung up. Helen with terminal cancer? That just can't be. But more than that, it's tough for Tyler alone to care for Helen. He's planning to go to grad school after graduation, and he has preparations for that. Walter is out of the picture. Even in a hospital with full nursing care and amenities rental, there's a lot the family needs to do. Doing laundry, like the patient's undergarments, is essential, and if walking is difficult, transferring to a wheelchair requires help. I must go home and see Helen's condition for myself. Depending on the situation, I might come back every weekend to give Tyler a break. While thinking about all this, I eagerly counted the days until the weekend. Well, Ashley dear, you came all the way back, sorry, it's really not that serious. Helen said from her hospital bed. Her voice sounded normal. But her complexion was not good. I'm sorry I couldn't come sooner. I said, and she just smiled and shook her head. Just as I was about to ask if there was anything I could do, the curtain opened and Walter appeared. Seeing me, his expression was one of surprise, 
but he quickly turned his attention back to Helen. How about this? Maybe it'll go down a bit easier. He was holding a convenience store bag. Walter took out a small jelly and a spoon from it. He then adjusted the bed to a reclining position and propped Helen up with pillows. He opened the jelly lid, scooped some with a spoon, and offered it to her mouth. Helen happily took it in. I almost had to rub my eyes. Grandpa Walter? Grandma Helen? Am I dreaming? But the dream continued. After Helen had eaten about half of her jelly, Walter cleaned up the cup and then opened the side table drawer and asked. Is this all the laundry? What's going on? What exactly is happening? Had I unwittingly stumbled into some alternate universe where my grandparents are all lovey-dovey? As I wandered into the hallway in a daze, Tyler was just coming from the elevator. Ashley, you're here. He said, but before he could greet me properly, I grabbed him by the shirt. What's all this about? Why is Grandpa talking about Grandma's laundry? Tyler chuckled wryly. Yay, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it either. But ever since Grandma was hospitalized, Grandpa has been doing it all. He even mentioned that Walter has been doing the laundry and cleaning at home. I was so surprised. I asked him since when he could do housework, and he said, after watching her for 50 years, I ought to know how, he told me. I almost felt dizzy and blurted it out, and Tyler laughed. I actually sighed. Grandpa using the vacuum and wiping down with the cloth, running the washing machine, and hanging the laundry. I laughed weakly, haha, when I asked if he hadn't helped, he said. He told me no one else should touch his things. Asking about their meals, Tyler made a rueful face and said, Grandpa's been cooking with slow cooker, making soup, and buying side dishes. When I was surprised he could cook, he said, anyone can do it if they read the instructions, and after 50 years of watching her do it, I should too. I felt like my image of Walter had done a complete 180. So, does Grandma know about her illness? I asked cautiously, and Tyler said that Walter had told her everything. He said he doesn't keep secrets from her. Just then, the door opened, and Walter came out of the room. Ashley, keep Helen company. Tyler, let's go home. Carry this for me. And without looking back, Walter walked down the hallway. Tyler waved, see ya, and followed Walter. I hesitantly returned to the hospital room. Helen chuckled softly as she lay back on the bed. When she asked if I was surprised, I replied, I thought the world had turned upside down. This time, she laughed with joy. That's right, his dominance is well established, it's only natural to be surprised. I became phobic of marriage because of that. I muttered to myself. But then, with a gentle look, Helen said to me, Walter was very kind from the first time we met, he was kinder to me than anyone else. Helen was born in a time when the country hadn't yet settled down after the war. Her mother had lost her family during the war but met her father afterward and seemed to have had a few years of peaceful life. Unfortunately, her father died soon after Helen was born. My mother was what you'd call a single mother today, raising me alone, but it was a time when there wasn't much consideration for women like her. Jobs were scarce and she managed to make ends meet by doing piecework at home. Thanks to the compulsory education system, Helen was able to go to middle school. After graduating, she got a job at a local factory, hoping to make her mother's life a little easier, but that was short-lived. Perhaps due to years of overexertion, her mother died of pneumonia that started as a cold. There wasn't enough money to pay the doctor. Back then, there wasn't the welfare system we have now, so all I could do was watch my mother pass away. Left all alone, Helen met a man at the factory. That man was Grandpa Walter. Maybe it was because of how I grew up, but I was shy and introverted, but he was very outgoing, the complete opposite of me, that's why I was drawn to him. Back then, Walter was obsessed with motorcycles, spending about half his salary on them. And when the factory was closed, 
He would take Helen out on long bike rides. At first, I was scared, because I had never been on something so fast. I clung to him desperately. But gradually, I got used to it and began to enjoy the scenery. That's when he proposed. I was so happy, tears came to my eyes, thinking I could spend my life with him. Then he asked if I was crying because I hated the idea so much. Helen laughed at how awkward he was. In a hurry, I explained it was tears of joy, and he said, Women are so hard to understand. So, I realized that there was a time like that for them. To me, they were always just my grandparents, but they had their own time and lives. It felt like I finally understood something that should have been obvious. He continued taking me on motorcycle rides to various places, even after we got married. Whenever he found something interesting, he'd invite me, suggesting we go together. I was truly happy. Feeling a bit guilty for dampening the mood, I interjected. But, you know, after he retired, Grandpa went on trips without you and he always had you walking behind him. What do you think about the concept of ladies first? Helen just smiled. The trips and golf outings, I asked him to go enjoy those with his friends alone. He had worked so hard and earned money throughout his youth without taking much time off. I wanted him to enjoy his time with friends after retirement, and... She trailed off, her gaze wandering into the distance. Yes, in our generation, it was common for women to walk behind men. Would young people today call it discrimination? She said with a teasing tone and I nodded in agreement. But that was to protect women from danger. It's so that in case of an attack, he can shield the woman with his own back. It was an eye-opening moment. Indeed, when you travel abroad, men often let women go first in elevators. But what if there's something dangerous inside, or a dangerous person is there? Does that mean the woman going first is in danger? The implications run deep. Hey, Ashley, Walter always walked ahead of me, guiding me towards the future like a pilot, and he still does. Guided. I did what I could do, and Walter did what only he could do. We've always complimented each other, where the other lacked, I'll of watching his back. She said, her eyes expressing pure happiness. I nodded, telling her to rest a bit. She smiled and closed her eyes. Helen said that she loves watching Walter's back. I thought to myself. Perhaps Walter was not only protecting her with his back but also entrusting her with it. What a profound trust that must be. Tyler had been keeping me updated about my grandparents through emails and chats. Fortunately, Helen's condition had stabilized. So I went on a scheduled business trip abroad. Work went smoothly, and only a few informal meetings with the client's company remained. That's when I got a call from Tyler. He told me that Walter had passed away from a heart attack. I asked my boss if I could return home immediately. Unable to get a flight reservation, it was four days after the call that I finally made it back. As soon as I landed at the airport, I called Tyler. Ashley. You're late. Grandma just passed away too. I stood frozen in the airport lobby, then somehow managed to pull myself together. I need to get there fast. I need to get home quickly. I tossed my bags in a locker and took several trains to reach my hometown. Rushing into the hospital, Helen had already been moved to the morgue. She lay there with a peaceful expression, as if she was just sleeping. Did she know Grandpa passed away? I couldn't help but ask Tyler as I gazed at her serene face. Tyler shook his head. I was too scared to tell her. I thought we'd talk it over when you got back. Grandpa, did he say anything before he passed? The words just slipped out of my mouth. I didn't even know why I asked that. Um, yeah. He said, I'm going ahead. Going ahead? To scout out ahead and wait for Helen? Is that what it meant? No. It must be. I caught my breath and just stood there. Ashley, I'm going to meet with the funeral director. Snapping back to reality, I replied, please do. I found out that Walter's body hadn't been cremated yet. 
The crematorium was backed up, and his body was being held at the funeral home. But it's a silver lining, Ashley. They can go together. I just nodded silently. I headed to clean up Helen's hospital room. There wasn't much left, really. Just a few clothes and some everyday items. Then, in the top drawer of the bedside table, I found something unfamiliar. It was a notebook. Flipping through it, I realized it was Helen's diary. It was more of a memo than a diary, really. Entries were simple, with dates and notes like Tyler, accepted into college. But the last page was different. The entry on the day Walter died was addressed to me. Ashley, if you're reading this, you might understand. Remember I told you, Walter was my guide. Grandma, did you know? That Grandpa had passed away? I don't know, maybe it was a sixth sense, I just knew Walter was gone. So, she knew. I shouldn't keep him waiting too long, so I'm going to join Walter, being with him was when I was happiest, after all. I swallowed the lump in my throat. Everyone's happiness is different, choose your own happiness, Ashley, don't hesitate to be happy. With tears blurring my vision, I desperately read the last words. Walter is waiting for me, and I can follow behind him again. I'm grateful for a happy life. Helen had followed in Walter's footsteps. Walter had depended on Helen to lead the way. This kind of deep trust was something I'd never really seen before. I had come to understand the strength of my grandparents' love. I was trapped by my own silly preconceptions, looking at my grandparents through a cynical lens. It was all just assumptions I had made on my own. I hadn't even noticed that Helen had been happy. Right, love is about trust. That's why Helen always knew what Walter needed with just a hey. I want to be in a relationship like there someday. Nah, I was sure of it. I hugged the notebook to my chest and crouched down. Helen's words, which are her last words, were filled with love for me. Yeah, Grandma. I'll be happy too. I definitely won't hesitate and live with regrets. I'll grab a happiness even greater than yours. I stood up and pulled out my phone from my bag. Jason, marry me. And let's be happier than anyone else. Let's walk into the future side by side. Grandma, Grandpa, thank you for the greatest legacy.